Hey Tappers, this video on releasing phobias was a request from Clara. So if you find benefit from it, let's give her a shout out in the comments. I would thank you for asking. And please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Now I had thought I already had a phobia specific video since I've talked about them multiple times and it's been a big part of my own journey, but apparently not. Until now, let's dive in. First, let's give a very basic definition of a phobia. It is when there is an irrational fear of something. Now, I want to stress irrational. If you see a spider in your house and you aren't sure if it's poisonous and you keep your distance while you're killing or catching it, that's rational. If you see a spider in your house and you scream bloody murder and in a single leap hang from the light fixture until someone else can confirm it is either dead or released, that would be considered irrational. Now, phobias don't just pop up when there's an actual encounter with the phobia. If you have a phobia of spiders, you may think about them at seemingly random times. Maybe while driving to work, you're wondering if you're cornered with one in your car, or while walking up to your front door, feeling like maybe there's one watching you just waiting for its chance to jump on you, or maybe while you lie in bed at night trying to sleep, your heart starts pumping because you're afraid one is going to drop down from the ceiling and land in your ear. Now, having these thoughts don't necessarily mean a phobia either. Everyone has thoughts about outcomes that would be unpleasant to experience, but if you have them and your response is a rapid heart rate, shallow breathing, and you avoid normal behavior due to that thought, well, that's more phobic. Now, since spiders are pretty common phobia, I'm going to stick with that example for now, but since Claire told me specifically what hers is, I will use that too in a bit. Now, tapping directly on spiders may not alleviate you of your phobia. Why? Because spider is what is on fire and it may not be the root cause. Do you remember the elevator phobia story? I'll briefly recap it. There was a woman with an elevator phobia who received an EFT session. She very quickly went past the phobia and into a childhood memory that seemed as an adult a little harmless and something she hadn't thought of in decades. Now, once this mild incident was released, so was her phobia. She immediately walked over to an elevator and rode in it with no issues or triggers. Why? Because this is a system of protection from our brain that consciously turns out a bit screwy. Now, we have an incident that crosses a barrier into a trauma response. Now, if you don't know what that is, watch the video linked in the description. And the brain tags it as something to never experience again. But here's the issue. We may not encounter that input often, and the brain needs to stay on high alert in order to protect us from that threat. So it creates a literal physical link in the brain from the triggering event to something that is convenient to spike those engagement hormones of fear to into action so that we can remain in high alert for survival. Her brain chose elevators. My brain chose dogs and dinosaurs. Wait, dinosaurs? Yes. These choices aren't rational and I have quite an imagination. Jurassic Park the movie had a deep effect on me as a kid. I loved the movie, but the dinosaurs in it made me feel incredibly threatened. It doesn't matter that they aren't real. My brain will interrupt a beautiful, happy moment with a disruptive thought like, what if a velociraptor came crashing through here right now? How would you protect your daughter? Would you run for safety or help others? What kind of a person doesn't help others? What kind of a person abandons their child to help strangers? And the stress hormones spike and the brain registers as, whew, we're safe again because now we're back at high alert. Even though consciously, I'm feeling a bit foolish due to the content of my thoughts. I'm confused, I'm highly anxious, and I'm embarrassed for what I'm fearing. So whatever phobia you have, know you aren't alone in feeling judgmental about what it is. So why did my brain need me to be on high alert? Well, due to events in my past, they made me feel highly vulnerable. Despite the twisted outcome, the brain is really trying to keep us safe. What it needs to be told is that the old threat isn't applicable anymore. This is where tapping comes in. Start with what you know. Clara knows that her phobia is thunderstorms, so bubble it out and write down all of the aspects of thunderstorms that you can and any thoughts that also pop up while you brainstorm, even if they don't seem related. 
thunderstorms are loud. You can't stop them. You can only try to protect yourself. Lightning, unpredictable where it will strike. Fear, shallow breath, clenching in chest. It can kill you. Thunderstorm during my sleepover at my cousin's house when I was seven. The bookshelf falling over in my kindergarten classroom, which made me cry, and the whole class laughed at me about it. All that jerk therapist in college who hit on me when I tried counseling for, tho for phobias there and so on. Now some may not pan out to be anything, like the jerk therapist with whom you did half a session before stomping out and reporting him for his verbal pass at you. Yeah, that's just a memory. No trauma there. But you may find your SUD score with the bookshelf in kindergarten is pretty high. And as you dive into it, all sorts of beliefs start coming up about how you were publicly shamed by your peers and your community for having a genuine response to a stimuli. Now we are deeply wired to find safety in community, so the brain would go deep into hyperdrive to protect you from the threat of being an outcast and likely link multiple things to ensure your survival here. Now notice I listed things that are events, things that are from intake from the five senses when a current or imagined encounter currently happens, other people, it can be other categories as well. The bottom line is your brain is trying to tell you why you aren't safe. It's important to ask what you aren't safe from and let it speak fully because it will tell you. And as you start to update in one area, those connections being broken down will lessen the intensity of the others and the, it will lose strength as a whole. So start with a place where you feel confident in being able to release it. You don't have to dive right into the hardest one first. I mean, you can, honestly, I tend to, but sometimes it's incredibly intense and you can choose easier and get the same outcome of freedom and relief. So once you have your roadmap, it is so important to tap. Tap right then, choose one thing and tap. You have unearthed a lot of things and you need to send that signal to your brain that now this means change. Otherwise, if you only sit and think about what you have found, you will find yourself strengthening those fear bonds instead of releasing them. So to recap, phobias are when there are an irrational fear attached to the input that you're experiencing. They are created by the brain as an effective way to keep your survival instincts sharp because your brain has old programming that is saying that you aren't safe and you can reset this response by releasing the live wire that is attached to the past event by tapping it away. Once the need for the survival cocktail is neutralized, so is the phobia. It may have multiple branches to explore, but eliminating each one will have an effect on the whole. Thank you, Clara, for your inspiration for this video. I hope it helps. I hope it helps everyone, and I will see you again soon.